All right, so popular demand. I'm just going to quickly run you guys through how to fix the shafts on these Sunny Sky 1106 motors. So this is a 6500 kV. Um, we've had these on the Nemesis X and I actually had two of these explode mid-flight. So the bells came off, never found one of the bells. I lost two of the shafts so unfortunately both of the motors were junk. What we have done though is we've worked out that if you use Loctite 638 uh, you can disassemble the motor, it's relatively easy. Um, there's not too much risk of damaging the motor as long as you do it pretty carefully. You've just got to make sure you get the, when you're putting the shaft back in, that you keep it as straight as possible. That's probably the biggest danger point. But um, we'll go ahead, we can open this up. Now I'm working around a phone right now, so seeing what I'm doing is a little bit difficult. So uh, standard construction. E clip, little brass washer. Note which direction the E clip is on. So if I get this up, let's see how far how well it focuses. So you see the sharp edges on the E clip are facing outwards. This makes it the least likely to pop off mid-flight. Now, getting these E clips off can be pretty challenging. Um, one thing I was always taught to do was to use a plastic bag so you actually both your hands and the motor inside the plastic bag with whatever tools you're going to use to get that e-clip off that way if it does ping off it doesn't disappear into the carpet or wherever never to ever be seen again um, what i've found is i use a pair of these that tend to fit quite nicely into the groove of the motor and i simply push that and that seems to start the e-clip just enough. Now I've got a little dental pick which is sometimes enough. I'm going to quite cover this up so that it doesn't ping off. Now watch me send it across the room just for Murphy's Law. Oop, not this time. Okay, so there is the e clip. So what I'm going to do grab I keep a, a handy lid around and I'll keep all the loose parts in there so next up is the little brass washer as far as I'm aware I've had a good look at this thing it's not tapered or anything it's just there to make sure that the load is applied onto that inner race not onto the shield of the bearing so once you've got that off that's one of the more fiddly parts uh, getting the bell apart is relatively easy. Just pull it off. Um, chuck that somewhere safe. It's not magnetic, so you're not going to have to worry about it getting stuck to anything or anything like that. Now, the next trick is to knock the shaft out. So as you can see, these are actually really, really nicely made motors. Um, probably some of the nicest small motors I've seen. And it's a big shame that they didn't knurl the shafts or do something to make them more durable. But uh, as we said, the uh, Loctite 638 seems to fix the problem pretty well. So now what I'm going to do, you want to find something that's going to support most of the bell, but allow you to drive that shaft out enough. So Aries, or however you say it, he was using a pair of pliers with a nice little hole in it. I've only got a pair that have a square hole, but it's close enough. Now what I do, I believe Aries was using the little vise that he bought to push it out. Personally, not a huge fan. Um, it can cause the shaft to, to rock or move, and if you do that, there's a chance that you'll overlize the hole and that'll make it a lot harder to put back in. So what I do, I just use the bottom of this little driver. It's just an aluminium handle, so it's softer than the shaft. And just give that shaft a few hits to go and get it out. And as you can see, they are in there reasonably tightly, but not very tight. You'd certainly want it to be more so. Um, chuck the bell aside. Make sure you don't put it where it's going to get filings or anything stuck to it. Now what I will do is I make sure that I do not touch this top area of the uh, shaft itself and that's mainly just because you don't want any finger oils or anything like that getting onto it. Now I've got a little bit of silicon rubber here. Now this next step, when I did my motors, I used a 
Dremel tool. So I don't know how well this is going to work, but what I've got is a disposable nail file. I use these for chamfering the edges of frames. They're awesome. You've got two different grits. Um, flexible. Once you, if you're getting into corners of frames, the edge tends to wear off and it actually works quite well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this back and forth. Try and roll it underneath this shaft and it's not working very well as I expected. Meh. Yeah. Okay. What we'll do is we will just manually rough this up. So what I'm trying not I'm not trying to change the diameter of the shaft here. I'm literally just trying to score the surface a little bit. It doesn't have to be much at all, but all it does is it creates a little bit of a key for the 638 to hold onto. So I'm just going to wipe that clean with something clean. I've got a little lens cleaning cloth here that will work. Now if we look carefully, come on, focus. Yeah, it's not going to work, but you can see there is actually light scoring there, so that's worked kind of well. Let's get rid of this stuff. Chuck that back down there. So, more scrap stuff that I've found. This is an old domed glass out of an old watch and it makes a perfect holder for putting some... I quite often put my Loctite and everything into this and then I can easily apply it to screw. So I'm only doing one motor. You need a very small amount. In fact I did I think I did four motors with a single drop of this stuff. So I'm going to prep the bell. So what I'm going to do is just, with something thin and skinny, just pick up a little bit of this stuff. And we're just going to smear it on the inside of this shaft hole. So let's see if I can get that a little bit closer to the camera. Hopefully this light that I've got in front of me is not too bright. You don't want to put heaps and heaps there, but you want to make sure that there's enough to properly like cover the entire surface of the hole in there when you push that shaft in. So that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to add a little bit more to this because it's just got so little there it's quite hard to get it out. Now, if my voice sounds funny, I'm holding my cell phone to record this in a cup right in front of me, and I'm working around it, so my voice may be reverberating in this cup. I'm just going to pick up that shaft, and I'm just going to loosely coat. You don't have to be too pedantic here. The main thing is probably to get it over the leading edge of this shaft where it steps because that's what's going to help carry it up into the rest of the shaft hole as you put this together. Now I did just forget to point out a step before we started with this and that was this little thing here that I've made. So okay that color works really badly with this light but um, what we've got here, this is an old prop hub, so you see it's a lot thinner than normal. What I did is I took a motor before I disassembled it, and I put this prop hub onto the motor, and then I shaved this down using a Dremel and then some sandpaper. And what I did is I made it so it sat just ever so slightly, like the shaft would sit ever so slightly higher than this. And what this means is that now when I go to put it back in, I'm going to get the shaft at the same height plus that tiny little bit extra that I've left, because we did find that these motors out of the box are a little too tight. Um, it was almost, they actually ran a little bit better when they would had a couple of hits, and their shaft was very slightly slipped. And then, of course, it went from slightly slipped to massively slipped very quickly. So to make this work, I'm just putting the original side that would go against this. I'm just going to... And assemble these and this is where the stepped shaft is actually quite good and this is where having this prop hub helps because now when I put this in 
can see there's a tiny little bit sticking out the front. So it actually helps it go in. So you can, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little bit crooked, so I'm just going to manually try and line that up. And what I'm going to do is just tap it in slightly. I actually give it a bit of a tap there to try and get it in a fair way. Because the further you get it in now, the less you have to press it. I find the pressing part of it kind of scary. It's um, especially with this vice that we're using, it's not very precise. Um, you can do this in a normal garage vice, or just even a small bench vice would be probably better than this thing. Um, we have, I don't know if you can see that, manually modified it. There was that much slack in it that this thing could just rotate side to side. So. Now that we've got that right, I'm just going to line this up roughly in the center there and bring this in to touch it. So that looks pretty good now. It looks visually pretty straight. So I'm just going to crank this up and that's pushing that in. So once I get that semi tight, I'm going to put a bit of force onto it now. Now you can see that that has come up flush with the top of this. Now remember I had a little bit so so now what I mm, I don't know if this is still recording. My phone just told me something about maximum file size. Okay, anyway, oh, do I stop? Do I keep going? I'm going to keep going. All right, so. Like I said, when I made the spacer, I had a little bit sticking out. So now what I know is that that shaft is now maybe 0.2 to 0.5 of a millimeter further this way. That means that when I assemble my motor, I'm going to have that 0.5 to 0.2 of a, 0.2 to 0.5 of a millimeter as free play in the shaft. So next thing to do is let's get rid of this stuff. We're going to clean clean up the excess residue that you can see inside there. So I'm just using Q-tips, you can use whatever you've got handy, preferably something that's not going to leave too much residue, um, or fibers and everything in behind. These things seem pretty good. So I'm just going to quickly clean it out as good as I can. You really don't want this bearing, the retaining compound getting into the bearings of the motor, that will ruin the motors. This stuff's very strong. Yeah, so now we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to take the stator, just make sure that both your bearings are in. I have had one where the bearing decided to come out with the shaft. It's not a big deal, they press fit in pretty easily. So once you've got that in, you can sort of see there's a bit of space there that looks to be a All right, we're back. Now, if you haven't realized already, I'm super new to this. Phone just filled completely up and stopped mid thing. So I've just quickly checked it. I think we were talking about the amount of space that we've got here between that step and the bottom there. It looks to be about the same as what the little brass spacer is in here. Um, so we're good. I've also switched to a earphone mic so that hopefully my voice isn't reverberating like it has been for the last couple of minutes. All right, so I'm going to chuck that spacer on, and as you can see, check it out. That looks pretty bang on. I'm happy with that. Grab your e-clip. Now, like I said before, if you want to be more careful, as I probably should be doing, do this inside a plastic bag or something. I'm because I'm trying to already work around a phone, a light, and everything else. I'm going to do it freehand. Hopefully, not pay the price. All right. So remember, sharp side, sharp edges of the e-clip facing outward from the motor. Grab that e-clip, get it pretty square, and give it a press. That 
nice little click usually means that we're winning and now this is where I'll do a quick little visual check come on focus do it and we go I just make sure that that's Double check there's a little bit of free play hopefully okay you probably can't see that on the video or maybe you can so see I can it was so slightly move that little brass washer that it's bang on this mode is going to be nice and tight and it's still going to rotate freely I mean even if it was size for size it would be fine but it's much nicer to have that with just a tiny bit of play I feel it means your bearings are going to last longer um, nothing's under tension um, rollerball bearings do not like side loading so, with a uh, bottle of 638 and some kind of ice and clamping and your handy dandy little spacer, you can do a bunch of these pretty quickly. Um, and it's, it's really not that dangerous. Uh, just be careful about, obviously, how you get this out. You want to keep it nice and straight, evenly aligned with the hole that it's supposed to go into. And when you start it, start it gently. Um, like I said, having a little spacer thing does help. Um, just tap it in there, let it find its own way center. Once it gets there, you can sort of knock it in a little bit further. Try and get it at least a millimeter or two in before you put it in the vise. Because if you do put it in the vise and it's not far enough in, it's quite easy for as you to do it up. It kind of cocks it sideways and then tries to drive it in. And I believe judging by the quality of the rest of this motor, I would say that this is probably actually quite a good aluminium. Um, 7075, something along those lines, so it's probably quite hard, but at the end of the day, it's still aluminium, aluminium, however you like to say it. Um, that's it. That's my first ever tutorial sorted. Hopefully this helps you enjoy the motors. We have, when I say we, I mean myself and the rest of the guys that have been testing <coughs> the, ne the Nemesis with me. We've given, given it a bit of a beating. As you can see, I've got just that tiny little bit of play on these motors. Um, I had a couple of good hits. Slid down some slides today. Power looped some fitness equipment. Crashed head first into a wooden pole and a few other things. But uh, I love this little quad. It has very, very quickly become my favorite go-to quad. Anyway, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope your motor's sorted. Like I said, we've done it. Works well for us so far. Hopefully it does the same for you. Cool. See ya.